Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Valen, and this is Thermal Expansion. Today I'm going to be teaching you a lot of the basics on how to get started in this mod. I won't be covering everything, but I should give you at least a good start into the mod. So Thermal Expansion has a lot of options in it, least of which are its machines. Now I personally have uh, kind of divided these up because there's a lot of machines to go through, and I've also added in another mod of the uh, same caliber, and that is Thermal Dynamics, uh, which is also in here just so that I can add in some piping options and some energy conduits. Uh, it's also highly recommended you get these this mod in coordination or cooperation with thermal expansion as it's designed to work with it uh, and highly useful uh, in just about every single way. So uh, with that out of the way, I've divided this in into multiple parts. I'm calling this tier one is these items that I have here in front of me uh, with a few exceptions, but uh, more or less they're items that do not require any kind of alloys to be made. And that means things like Electrum or... Um, Invar, things of that nature. Uh, so therefore, those are going to be some of the other machines I'll cover in another bit by bit some other time. But for the moment, we're going to get started on this. Now, uh, these items here are going to mostly be generated or mostly be useful through the use of power. Some of them will not be, and therefore you will need to generate power. Now, is there some kind of coal generator in this mod? Kind of. It's not your standard coal generator, and for that, I have a lot of respect uh, because almost every mod out there that, that's tech seems to just have a strictly coal generator. In this one, it adds a bit of a twist, and I really do enjoy that. So to start with, there are a couple different types of uh, things that are made. And when I pick up like a machine frame and a device frame, they're totally different in how they are going to be able to be uh, upgraded, if at all. So a machine frame is used to make lots of different things like, uh, you know, your redstone furnace, your pulverizer, sawmill, things of those natures. Any of them that are gray should be able to be upgraded. Uh, and any of them that use a device frame, uh, as so, will be making these bluer containers or devices. And they cannot be upgraded in a similar fashion. Now, I will barely be touching anything about upgrades because most of the upgrades will require some kind of alloy. So I'm getting you started in this and we're not making alloys just yet. I'm going to show you some of the uh, beginning power generation methods and then I'll take you through the rest and I'll even show you some of the, uh, the details on how to uh, make yourself a good automatically made uh, power generation system. So to start with, we've got a steam dynamo. When you right click on it, you've got all these different tabs and everything on it. I'm going to kind of use this one to show you a little bit about how to understand the different interfaces on these with the steam dynamo to start with. This here, any of them that you see this kind of meter with a really dark red in here, this is the power storage uh, area here. Typically on the left side of most of these things is going to be items that are going in. On the right side is usually going to be some area for items that are going out. Not always, but that's typically the case. So if you have a general look at something, that should help. Uh, now, in some cases, as you see here, there's these little like flame uh, shadow here. If you click on that, it can show you the different uses for this thing. And that is things that it can smelt in order to generate power in this case. You've got your wood products, your coal products, uh, wool, and so on. There's a lot of different products you can burn in a steam dynamo to generate power. Uh, now, if I go into something a little more interesting like this, you, you instead get an arrow. Ignore everything else on here. I'm just talking about the arrow at the moment. This will allow you to show recipes in a similar fashion. So it's not always the same icon that you might be clicking on. Now, over on the left here, it says zero RF per tick. This is telling you that there is no power currently coming into or out of this unit. It can generate up to 40 redstone flux per tick and that's the uh, units of power that it can use. It can store energy as well because it has a uh, reservoir of 40,000 redstone flux that it can store internally. Also if you click on the eye it'll give you a brief description of what this block is and what it can do which can be quite useful. Uh, now this one here tells you already solid fuels and water can be used to generate steam generation rate varies according to the energy demand and it generates redstone flux using steam so therefore you need a solid fuel and water so if i were to take a bucket of water and just right click on it you'll see that it goes into its internal reservoir it can hold up to four buckets of water might as well fill it up 
There we go. Now if I put something else in here, if I click on the recipe, it'll show me what items I can use. I can use coal, I can use charcoal, I can use all sorts of wood products. You know what, let's grab a little bit of wood. I think I've got at least uh, a piece or two that I could grab. There we go. Look at that, 64. So I toss that in, it starts burning through the product and it starts generating power which if this red area on top is lit up, then you know that it's got power in it. If it is currently touching a machine, this red area here, it should be pushing power into that machine. If I pick this up, the recipe for a steam dynamo is rather simple. It's a copper, couple copper gears, redstone transmission coil, and some iron ingots. Copper gears are made simply with copper ingots. And of course, the uh, redstone transmission coil is redstone and silver. So you don't have any kind of alloys in there. It's a basic recipe and it can generate you some power at a rate of up to 40 redstone flux per tick. Now you notice it's not at its maximum there. It's kind of being efficient in just generating its power at an even rate. There are upgrades that you can add on to this, but as I said before, I'm not going to be covering the upgrades really too much. Uh, that will be in the next part when we start getting into alloys and the tier 2 items. What else can I do with this steam dynamo? Now if you click over here augmentation, you do need upgrades for that in order to augment this further, and you do have some redstone controls. You click on here, you can choose it to ignore redstone, you can choose it to have a low redstone signal, or, or respond to a, a low redstone signal, or respond to one being on. So essentially, uh, you know, lower or maximum uh, style redstone can turn it on and off. So therefore I could, you know, put a lever on here, I could put it on the side, I could turn this to high, and you can see that it actually stopped shy of maxing out. And if I turn this just to be ignored, it will ignore the fact that there's a signal on there, and it will just start continuing to produce. So that was just an idea uh, of how it works and how to read some of the different displays on here. Each machine will probably have a different display to understand. Now the next type that I'm going to show you is a compression dynamo. Uh, I feel I should mention that the compression dynamo's recipe is made primarily with tin, iron, and redstone transmission gears course uh, so it's just a bunch of tin items you see that there's a couple different items in here if you look on the side it says it generates redstone flux using fluid fuels and coolants generation rate of course varies according to the energy demand now in this case I'm gonna put in some water and what else can I put in here let's try some tree oil uh, that's and you should see that it, it it's generating power. Look at that, and it's lit up, and I can therefore use it to power my machines as well. Now I just chose these because I already know that these work. If you don't know what works on this, you can always look up a compression dynamo. In this case, there isn't a little uh, area for you to click on, um, but you can still, you just kind of hover around here. There's like a little show recipes. I think it's just a little uh, visual glitch that it's supposed to have like little flames on the side here. But if you don't have that option, and you do have a JEI, or just enough items installed, you can always look up a compression dynamo, and then hit U to look up the uses for it, and it will still tell you the recipes regardless. So this just gave me a good opportunity to show you that there is multiple ways you can do this. Now, I have several uh, mods also installed in here, like actually additions, so it does work with like crystallized oil, for example, refined canola oil, uh, but as far as thermal foundation goes, Tree oil, like I just had. Uh, refined fuel. You've got some other items from other other mods in here. But you can see that basically there are plenty of different options. I think, yeah, immersive engineering's biodiesel even works. Uh, naphtha, there, there's, uh, which is thermal foundation. But it's got several different things. And usually it's water on one side and some kind of other liquid fuel on the other. So that is a compression dynamo. And these are very strong. So if I click on here, and let's go with tree oil, one bucket's worth will generate 1 million RF over time. But of course, this is going to be limited to a maximum of 60 RF per tick, and it's going to slowly generate power as it starts getting close to the top. Now let's get into the third dynamo, which is a generator of sorts, for those that are confused, a reactant dynamo. Now this one here, of course, will generate 40 RF per tick, and this is just until these things get upgraded. You can upgrade each of these, uh, but as said before, I'm not going to show you how to do that in this one because right now you're just getting into it. Reactant dynamos are a little bit more high-end as far as uh, starting stuff goes because you need petrothium dust or nether wart, gunpowder, plus a combination of another liquid. So this is kind of similar to a steam engine, except instead of water and a burnable uh, source, you're going to need uh, some kind of other liquid 
and another kind of item that is often found to be drops like petrothium dust um, can be made with basalt powder pulverized obsidian clay redstone so like i said this is a more advanced one i'm just showing you that this isn't uh, too bad of an item the reactant dynamo strangely the recipe isn't too bad either that's just a bunch of lead really uh, but it's um its input is going to be very restrictive though the amount of rf it can produce from very little like destabilized redstone and a piece of nether wart can be quite substantial that's just one tenth of a bucket of red destabilized redstone that's not an entire bucket and that's one piece of nether wart so it, it can be quite rewarding now on to some of the machines that don't require power we've got an arboreal extractor this item here is very, very powerful and is very early game. So the recipe for it is going to be copper, a bucket, uh, one of those device frames I showed you earlier, a couple tin gears, and a redstone servo. Servos are just redstone and ironing it. So it's very minimal cost. Uh, remember, you're going to need uh, at least some basic materials in order to get these things up and running. But all you do is you grow yourself a tree and you put this on the side. And it will start very slowly extracting... Uh, some kind of sap or tree uh, liquid juice of, of sorts. There are multiples that you, that you uh, might get. In this case, resin. In other cases, it might be sap. It all depends on the tree that you have chosen. Uh, and each one may have different uses. I will be demonstrating how to use this to your advantage. On the side, you can also add in some kind of fertilizer that may also further enhance it and speed up the process. Uh, you've got, of course, your information on the side here if you need to check it out. I do recommend you get one of these things pluck, uh, planted up next to a tree as quickly as possible. You can have them on every single side of a tree. And I will actually go into the specifics of uh, the setup around a tree a little bit later on when I show you how to create a uh, permanent power gen that doesn't require any kind of maintenance. Next up, we've got the Aqueous Accumulator. Now this one here is made from the device frame. Some tin gears, a redstone servo, bucket, and some glass. So it, it's really inexpensive, and what it does is uh, rather simple. You just need water on at least one of its sides, preferably two, uh, and then it will start gathering water. The more water around it, uh, up to you know four sides, maybe, actually probably more than that, but any of its flat sides that have water, it will increase the speed at which it starts uh, uh, gathering water from the environment. You notice it doesn't actually use up the water on either side of it. So this one that I set down is going to have uh, no water in it. If I break this, put another one down, you can see it's going to start increasing the water one, two, etc. Now if I also put more water behind it, it will increase at a much faster rate, five, seven, so you can see it's already increased. You're going to want to get at least one on either side. Uh, if you do have an option to add more to it, eh, why not? And that'll be useful for other tools, but it can gather water so that you can then feed them into multiples of your machines, specifically things like a steam dynamo or a compression dynamo, rather. And next up we have here something that actually does require power, and that's a fractionating still. This one here is made from a copper gear, redstone reception coil, machine frame, and a nickel gear. This one's a little bit more expensive because nickel's not quite so easily easy to find. Uh, redstone reception gear is just very simple. And of course your machine frame and copper gears is just just a bunch of ingots really. Uh, but this here is going to be able to empower you to make a lot of things. So let's click on it and check out this UI. Now this one's a lot more confusing than some of the other ones we've seen so far. On the left, of course, we've got our power, we've got our input, we've got some kind of process that we can check out the recipes, and multiple outputs. Very confusing, but it does create, it does use at least 24, or up to 20 RF per tick for what it's currently going to be doing. It can store up to 20,000 RF, and it can also be powered by uh, such things. Now in this case, I have an item on top. And something I haven't showed you yet is how to actually configure some of these things. If I click on the configuration cog here, you can see that there's all sorts of weird stuff going on. Let me shift click, and you'll notice that all the sides have now become clear. What that does, if you look here, the side here is blank. If I right click on it, and I click on the side, it now has placed something on that side. You can see that little blue square with the dot in the middle. Blue equals input. Any other color is going to equal output. Usually it's going to be orange, yellow, or red. So you can see here there's red as an output, yellow as an output, 
orange is an output, or any combination that you might have. In this case, it's input and output because there's both orange and blue. So you can have feasibly something going in and out of the same spot. Now, once again, just by shift clicking in the center, everything gets cleared off of all the sides. Uh, otherwise, you can just click on any of these that you want anywhere you want them to be. And I now have put inputs on all the sides, but you cannot do anything with the front face because that's going to be your interface for it at the very least. Uh, or it's just where there's a pretty image and I, I can't say I blame anybody for that. Now these machines will all automatically output, but they won't necessarily auto input unless the machine is specifically set for it or you augment it or upgrade it in some way. So just keep that in mind for now that Currently, you have to have things uh, being fed, pushed into it, or uh, pulled from it. Because it will automatically push things out into another machine, perhaps, but it's not going to automatically input things. For instance, it's not automatically inputting from this portable tank. But that portable tank is also set to input right now, because if you notice, there's a little blue line at the bottom. That's meaning that it is currently set to input and will not output either. So... What's a fractionating still actually going to do for me? This is going to create things. Let's click on the recipe. So if I take some kind of liquid on the left, you can see that there's a few different things uh, for our options. It will then create potentially either another liquid or another solid. So therefore that explains why we've got a tank section and an output section for solids. In some cases you'll get both rosin and tree oil from resin. Oh, that's right. Starting to see some of the dots connecting and our boreal extractor is extracting resin from this tree automatically and therefore it can be fed into a fractionating still and create both rosin and tree oil. And if you remember, perhaps, I've put tree oil in this compression dynamo. Hmm, some things actually work really well together. Now, fractionating still, of course, does require power. It's kind of a circle of life where you need a starting point. You will need to prime this with some power. And I'll show you how to uh, generate all of that in the future. But for the moment, I'm going to actually pump some of the liquid in. There we go. You can see that water is going, or that <laughs> the liquid, the resin is going in and is currently not doing anything because it does need some power. Now I do have a flux capacitor, which is basically a battery with infinite amounts of power stored on it and it's automatically just filling this thing up. Now I could have multiple versions of ways of having this being powered, but you can see uh, I'm just using this for demonstration. It is generating this resin into rosin, which then can be used for multiple other things like torches, pistons, anything that you would typically use a slime ball for. Uh, it can also be used to make florbs, which is a portable method of throwing liquids. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's also got other uses. If you notice here, fuel. Rosin can be used as fuel, and it can be used in a steam dynamo. Just so that you can see, it is now also getting a secondary output of tree oil, which can also be used in not just a steam dynamo, but a compression dynamo. So you're getting two very useful things that you can be using to power your uh, generators, to power the rest of your machines. So enough about this, let's get into some of the other items. I have here a strong box. Now, typically it'll have just a couple rows. It can be lockable. It can be upgraded. And I will show you. There you go. I've just upgraded it because I'm using a, a hardened upgrade kit. Uh, I will get into those in more detail in the future, but just know that that can be upgraded. The portable tank, which can store fluids when you, uh, you know, create this and make it, uh, which actually I should grab this. The uh, strong box is made simply with some tin around a chest. Uh, the portable tank, on the other hand, the recipe for that is some glass, copper ingot, and a redstone servo, which of course is rather cheap, and it can store 20 buckets of stuff. Of course, you can always upgrade that, and it can store even more. Now, we also have a cache. What is a cache, you might ask? A cache is a barrel, for those that are familiar with the barrel mods, or a storage drawer. It's a singular storage block that can store, currently, up to 20,000. That's right, 20,000 on its base creation. So let me grab a copy of this block. Recipe for it is just tin around a chest with a redstone at the bottom. So it's similar to a reinforced chest, but not quite. Uh, or a, um, a strong box, but it's not quite. And it, of course, can be stacked. You can have multiple versions of these and so on. And you can have them locked. Uh, if I shift right click, it will unlock it. 
If I right, if I shift right click again, it will lock it. And what does locking do? It it means that if I empty this out now, in this case, that there's almost seven thousand potatoes in there, or baked potatoes. I'm I'm not gonna empty that out. But if I were to empty it out completely, down to zero, it would still say that only baked potatoes can be put in here. And that is basically the idea of this. It's a very large storage for a singular item. And of course, like the others. So now we get into some more useful tools and uh, machines. In this case, we've got a redstone furnace, one of the most basic things you can get. I have some comparisons here as well. If I look in a regular furnace, a couple pieces of coal, of course, will make 16 potatoes into 16 baked potatoes. Well, in a redstone furnace, if I use two pieces of coal in a steam dynamo with, of course, a little bit of water as well, and I toss in those 16 potatoes, I, I have a lot of leftover power. Now in this case, you can see I have 12,006 left over in the steam dynamo from generating that power, and I've got 20,000 left over in the machine, and it's it could still keep going. Now I did disable it with a redstone control, so that's why it's currently there. And you can of course always feed things into it with like a hopper if you so desire, or just manually place it inside. But if you look, it does have some special stuff. It it of course will use different amounts of uh, redstone, maximum of 20 per tick. But it smelts things using redstone flux and uses very little energy to cook food. For that, I have another demonstration. Up here, I did the same exact setup. I put two pieces of coal in a steam dynamo with a bunch of water. I put two pieces of coal in a steam dynamo with a bunch of water. And in both cases, this one here has 12,006. This one has 9,182. So you notice the one on the top has a little bit left, a little bit less. Inside it has a lot less, so you notice it's missing a lot of RF. Reason being is I did not smelt up food. I smelted up oak wood into charcoal, 16 to be exact. And I'm just showing you this for example sake. Of course, as before, you can always click on the show recipes to see the different things that it can make you smelt. It, it's basically a furnace. It's powered by uh, RF, and it can be much more efficient and faster than a furnace. For instance, I was smelting about uh, three potatoes to every one uh, and just from the start on a furnace. It's probably even faster than that once it's got, uh, gotten warmed up. But you can see that it uses a lot more power to smelt non-food items in this case, and that was what I was trying to communicate. And at least a much better and faster version of a Minecraft furnace. So uh, just keep in mind it will have to be powered by a steam dynamo, uh, or some kind of power source at the very least. And the recipe for this one's redstone, some copper gears, redstone reception coil, machine frame, and some bricks. Now, a pulverizer is going to be probably the first thing that you're going to want to make, uh, and if uh, besides power generation, because this, of course, will require power. Now, if I click on a pulverizer, it is used to turn one thing into multiples. That uh, that seems a bit generic, but it's, the reason for that is if I show recipes, you can turn sandstone stairs into sand with a possible secondary output of niter. You can turn, of course, ores doubling them with a possible secondary output in most cases. Another brick slabs and another brick. So you can see it crushes things into potentially other things, flowers into dyes. Uh, you've got your redstone sand or red sandstone into more sand and so on. It, it just keeps going. You might find some strange items like diamond shears or tools might be turned into diamonds and uh, obsidian into pulverized obsidian. Uh, but of course, the most common use is ore duplication. For instance, uh, if I uh, put in, which I did in this case, a half uh, stack of iron ore, it gave me a full stack of pulverized iron and two pulverized nickel, which then I can smelt up the pulverized iron in my furnace and create 64 ingots. Plus, I have two left. Or I could take these and start making alloys. Uh, an alloy for the in this case would be like two pulverized iron and a pulverized nickel in a crafting grid will create invar, which is going to allow us to get into our tier two items. So that can be very useful as just one example. Now you can always change your different settings. You can see there's a lot. It looks very confusing with all the different colors. Just remember, you can always just shift uh, left click and it will clear everything and then you can start anew for where you want it to go. So you could have things starting in a pulverizer automatically being fed into a redstone furnace, for example. I could have it go out, have both of those export to this furnace, and then I could have this furnace uh, export uh, to 
a, uh, a chest on the side or on the back or something of that fashion. There is plenty more to go, and that is a sawmill. A sawmill is used to turn all sorts of wood-like products and wool-like products into others. I mean, it, it's not everything. In this case, like an item frame, you, you get leather with, a, with some, some sawdust. You might also get some secondary outputs, a note block. You might get a 25% chance of getting redstone and some wood and so on. And you can keep doing this. I mean, if I go back here, a note, a jukebox, you might be able to get a diamond and some uh, oak planks. Most likely, if it's some sort of wooden make, you're probably going to get at least half the wood back. So anytime that you're out uh, pillaging the the mines or villages, you might want to just grab everything and throw it back into a sawmill or a pulverizer and get all the secondary stuff from it. In this case, I put one oak wood in here, and I got six oak wood planks and a piece of sawdust, which can be used for making paper or different kind of fertilizers or making more compressed sawdust, which can also be used for making charcoal. So you've, you've got a lot of options here because uh, it, it's increasing the amount that you would get from a regular crafting table but of course at the cost of power. Remember, most of these machines are going to use power. Not all of them, like these two don't, but most of them will. And here we have the item allocator. The item allocator is used, as it says here, to store and transfer items. And there is no power cost involved, though it can accept a redstone signal to accept or, uh, you know, turn things off. Now it can auto input and auto output. This is one of the few machines that comes with that standard. Uh, but then again, it's also one of the blue machines that is a device and cannot be upgraded. So it's probably a good thing that it can. Uh, now in this case, I have it set to do nothing. It's just going to sit here. But if I put a few of these potatoes in here, so there we go. It's going to continuously fill things in here, uh, but it's going to want to output 32 at a time because that's orange. Input is currently set to 4. So if I increase that to uh, 64 and put that entire stack in there. The entire stack's automatically inside. The output is set for 32. Let's reduce that a bit more, shall we? Let's reduce that by 16. Let's reduce it to, to uh, 1. No, 4. 4, that'll work. Okay, so the output, it's going to shoot 4 at a time. There's our output on top. That's a mistake. Let's go on the back side where I've got this hopper. Which, of course, the hopper is actually facing away from it, so it's not just going to feed back into it. That would be a little bit confusing. But let's have it go out the back. And you can see it's taking four at a time. So you can see the basic idea of this machine is you can have an input coming in, and it can basically have all sorts of things going out in all sorts of directions that might be uh, helpful. In this case, I, I kind of started taking things from different directions. But you can have stuff come in and have it... Uh, pushed around in multiple directions. It's kind of a splitter of sorts. It can also store items in it. It's all up to you on how you want this to work. It's, well, just better than a hopper, really. And then we've got a nullifier. This is a very simple block. It is, by all terms and means, a trash can. It is meant for you to be able to void things, as the term goes. I have an item hopper here. It's just feeding directly into the side, which is currently set as an input, as that's the only thing you can do with this, is have things go as inputs because there are no outputs. It's a voiding machine. So if I put a bunch of potatoes in here, let's actually put that, that in there. It, you see there's nothing happening, but they're all being voided. And then if I have this portable tank filled with water on top, it will also void liquids. Let's turn that to output and then it just starts voiding the water it's it's gone so there you go one way of getting rid of excess stuff now i realize that i have been talking quite a bit about this three setup this three piece setup here and some of these uh, generators i'm going to be showing you how to do that but i'll show it to you in the next part of getting started if you want to stick around for that i should have that out shortly and therefore you should be able to do that just uh take a click on that little eye on the icon there once this uh the second video is updated and you should be able to uh, check it out in the meantime Don't forget to like, subscribe, and as always, spread the mischief to others if you think they'll enjoy this content too. Until next time, folks, I'll see ya.